Hey guys, hi. How are you all? Kaise hain aap log? I hope you all must be doing very good. So today we are once again here to discuss the chapters which we are going we are going through the real numbers. And today I am again here in front of you all with some more new concepts and with some more new questions just to make this whole chapter more clear to you all. So in the previous session we had discussed about Euclid's division lemma and in this session we are going to discuss about Euclid's division algorithm. So let's start. The real numbers which we are going to deal is a very important chapter indeed. A uh, very important chapter because most of the students feel it's a, uh, feel it a little bit boring. So this we had already done, and today we are going to do this Euclid's division algorithm. Now in the previous session, I was able to see many of the comments also that sir uh, or even the chats that sir, what is the difference between a lemma and an algorithm? So let's see what is an algorithm basically. Algorithm is a series of well-designed steps. That provide a procedure to calculate successive results of earlier steps till the desired result is obtained. A little bit of mathematical statements it is, but you can just understand it in a very easier term that lemma is basically a statement given which does not require a proof. It's just a statement. Now, when I use this statement, when I use this statement in mathematics to get something, to prove something, to find any value that is called as algorithm. So Euclid's division lemma that is a equals to bq plus r dividend equal to divided divisor into quotient plus remainder. This is a statement lemma. And now once now if we will be using this lemma to prove something or to get the value of few things that will be called as algorithm. So let's start using this lemma and make it an algorithm. So we will be using basically it for finding the HCF highest common factor you all must be knowing and it is also called greatest common divisor GCD of two numbers. So we will be using basically right now this uh, Euclid's division lemma EDL for this only. So let's see this is the first of the question that find the HCF of 117 and 45. See we can do the prime factorization here and we can find it but I want you guys to learn a new method. So let us see here. So the smaller number number will be taken as the divisor and the larger number will be taken as the dividend. So we have taken it now. Now let's divide. So 45 would be I guess two times and we would be getting 90. Okay. So now we got uh, I guess 27 here. Now whatever is the remainder here will become my new divisor and whatever was my previous divisor will become my new dividend. This is how it works. So 27 will divide 45 now. So now if I am dividing 45 by 27, I will be doing it in one time 27 and we have got I guess 18. Now this 18 is the remainder. So it will become again new divisor and the old divisor will become my new dividend. So this is 27. So I'll do it here. 18 will divide 27. So it will be in one times. 18 and 9 is the remainder. So this 9 remainder will become again the divisor and the previous divi divisor will become the dividend. So 18 and it will be divided in two times. So 18 and 0 is the remainder. So now whatever is your last divisor here your last divisor is 9. Why? Because after this there is no such division possible. So this is the last divisor. So whichever is your last divisor that will be your HCF. So here last divisor is your HCF and we got our HCF of 117 and 45 as 9. So I guess you all would have understood this method. So this is how we find HCF of two numbers using this long division method or you can say Euclid's division lemma. Okay. So 9 is the correct answer and I guess you all would have understood this. Now let's move on. So this is the complete solution even I have stuck it for you guys. I just pasted it means uh, solve this whole solution for you guys for your reference. If you want, you can refer to this. Now, there is one more question. Just do a practice for a practice. If we have to find the HCF of 210, 210 and 55, we will do the same thing. 55 will divide 210 and that will be, I guess, in three times. That will be 165 and then we will be having something around 45, I guess. 45 will be dividing 55 in one times, I guess. This is 45 and then we will have 10 here. 10 will be dividing 45 in uh, 4 times and then we will have 40 here. 5 is the remainder. Now this 5 
will be dividing this 10 because this is the divisor so 5 will be dividing 10 in 2 times and we will be getting 10 so this is cancelled and this is the last divisor so this is going to be our hcf isn't it now this is the answer so <clears throat> if you have understood this let's move on so 5 is the correct answer that's really absolutely fine and fantastic this is the complete solution also for this question if you want you can refer this now let's see some other type also so now the other type of question which is very important from your examination perspective let me tell you this is a not an important but a very very important question so please don't leave this and please try to understand this because it's a bit typical so we have to find the hcf first of 65 and 117 and then we have to express this hcf in the form of 65 m plus 117 n means multiple of 65 and multiple of 117 in addition of this we have to express it like that so first step would be just find the hcf of these two numbers so 65 would be dividing 117 i guess in one times this is 65 and if i am not this is uh, if i am not wrong this is uh, 52 okay yes so 52 is again dividing 65 one times this is 52 we got 13 as the remainder and now this 13 divisor and 52 will be coming here so we will be getting it in four times and 52 it's cancelled now this is going to be our hcf so we have got our hcf so we need to express our hcf means 13 in the form of 65 m plus 117 and means this is going to be our equation so we have to just find the value of m and n here how we are going to do this just pay attention the method goes very simple that you have to write down all the divisions in the equation form dividend equal to divisor into quotient so here dividend is 52 equal to divisor into quotient divisor is 13 quotient is 4 plus remainder is 0 here similarly for this division also dividend our dividend is 65 this time equal to divisor into quotient plus remainder and similarly for this also so dividend is 117 equal to divisor into quotient plus remainder is 52 now once we got all these values you have to just concentrate on this line of remainder why i am saying that you have to concentrate on this because in all of these equations you need to find the value of this remainder so if you will be finding the value of this remainder 52 you need to send all these things to other side so if i am writing 52 here the 65 will be going to this side and it will become i'll write equal to 117 is already here and this 65 into 1 will come to this side it will be minus so minus 65 into 1 that is 65 now here if i talk about i have 3 here so i'll be writing here 3 is equals to 65 is here so 65 is here opposite side of equal to and this 52 will also go to this side so we have minus 52 that's perfectly fine and here we do not have anything so always remember you will never try to find the value of this remainder from the last step you will always leave the last step and you will write these equations from second last step so here second step is the second last step okay so now once we have done this once we are here with our equations you will find out that second last step this step will always have that equation which you want means device sorry it should have been 13 i'm sorry for this this should have been 13 because here the remainder is 13 i'm sorry i'm sorry so this is 13 okay so you will be able to see that here this equation will give you the equation of the hcfs because we have the hcf 13 and we require this equation only so this equation is going to give you this desired equation so i am writing it again in the next page 52 was equals to 117 minus 65 i guess and then 13 was equals to uh, i guess 13 yes 117 minus 65 and then this 13 was equals to 65 minus 52 okay that's fine so 65 minus uh, 52 yes fine so now what we need to do that here we have written all the things here now so 
we will be just moving forward and this 13. Now everyone please pay attention that 13 is equal to 65 minus 52. So, but in this equation, original equation, which we want, we want only 65 multiple and 117 multiple. So we have 65 here. We are able to see 65 in this equation, but 52 is of no use for me. I don't want 52. I want 117. So I can put the, I can substitute this 52 with other values and this 52 has a value. I can, instead of 52, I can write down this value here. So I will be just substituting it. I will write 65 minus in place of 52. I'll write 117 minus 65. Okay. And this is 13. So now let's solve this. This is 65 minus into 117 is minus 117 and minus into minus is nothing but plus. So this is plus 65. So 65 plus 65 is two times 65 and this is minus 117. Can I write it like this? Uh, 2 times 65 plus minus 1 times 117 because minus 1 into plus is does not make a difference it will be again minus so why I have written it like this I'll just give you the information this is 2 into 65 uh, or better shall I write it 65 into 2 2 into 65 or 65 into 2 does not make any difference and here I can write plus 117 into minus 1. Now why I have written it like this I'll just show you. See we required 13 equal to 65 m plus 117 n. So I'll just write here 13 is equal to was required 65 m m plus 117 n. Now if you are able to see that we can compare them now and we have got our value. So we got m is equals to 2 and n is equals to minus 1 and this is what we required. Let me tell you this question might be looking very lengthy to you might be even confusing but this is damn important. Don't leave it otherwise you are going to surely lose this marks in your examination because it's a sure short question in the examination even for your midterms even for your unit test and even for your finals board exam. This is very important. So we got the HCF that is 13 and we got the value of M and N also that is 2 and minus 1. So let's see the solution 13 is the correct response and how to solve this whole thing. So we have we have also got M equal to 2 and N equal to minus 1 and this is how we require to solve this. I guess this must be clear to you all and this is very important let me tell you. Now let's try to solve one more question of HCF or LCM. Here I get multiple queries from many of the students that sir from a word problem how to find it out that whether the question is asking for an HCF or an LCM. I'll just give you a very simple clue. Just encircle all the numbers which is given here. 616 is given here, 32 is given here. So whatever has to be done done has to be done with these two numbers itself. Either HCF or LCM. So we have confusion between only these two numbers. Now don't read the whole question just read out the last line. Here the last line says that two groups are to march in the same number of columns. What is the maximum number of columns in which they can march? They means an army. So here the basically the question is saying asking basically that what is the maximum number of columns? If I am not wrong uh, that, that you are all understanding then this columns means perhaps the lines the Q in which the army stands these kind of columns I guess that here the army people would be standing like this. So basically this question is asking that how many number of columns would be required how many number of queues of army members would be required to accommodate 616 army members along with 32 band members how much lines would be required. Now you just answer me one simple question that if we have 616 army men, then would the number of queues, number of lines which would be required is going to be less than 616 or equal to 616 or more than 616? I just need one answer. I guess every one of you would agree that sure, surely that if there are 616 men, then surely 616 lines would not be required. Any number less than that would be feasible because if 10 students are standing, we don't form 10 lines. Rather, we form one line of 10 students or two line of 5 students each, something like that. So, 
if you read out the question and if you get a information that in this question whatever the answer is being asked that answer is less than the given less than the given quantity it is less means this number of columns is surely going to come less from 616 or 32 so whenever the answer is required is less less then always apply hcf highest common factor this goes vice versa if the answer which is required is less than the given numbers apply hcf if the answer which is required if you read out and if you get a feel that this answer required is more than the given values then apply lcm least common multiple this vice versa rule always works so if you are able to find it out that hcf is the answer hcf we need to find hcf of 616 and 32 now it's good to go so i'll just give you how to find the hcf so i'll just write the prime factorization of 32 that is 2 raised to power 5 i guess and for 616 uh, i need to find it out so let's find it out 616 so 2 that will be 308 again 2 that will be 154 again 2 that will be 77 and for 77 it would be 7 and 11 so i'll write it down 3 2s means 2 cube into 7 into 11 so we take the common factors for hcf so 2 is the common factor and then we take the lowest power of that common factor so 5 and 3 the lowest power is 3 so our answer is 2 raised to power 3 that is nothing but 8 so 8 is going to be our correct answer and even the correct answer is 8 so by this method you would be able to find the hcf or lcm whatever is required in that question you would be able to recognize just by reading the question and even the last line oh, sorry even only the last line and the numbers which are given here by this much information you would be able to figure it out that whether hcf is required or lcm is required so i guess you would have understood this so this is the complete solution also i have taken this for you guys so you can just refer them so this was all from my side again it was really a fantastic and wonderful session with you guys i always like and love being with you guys imparting some education some values and getting some input from you guys it's really always fantastic and awesome so myself Ashpriyam signing off at this junction seeing you all guys in some other sessions till then bye bye and take care bye